Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will see the different instruments that are required for a proper access cavity preparation in a root canal procedure. So let's get started. As we all know, endodontic treatment can be divided into three main steps. Access cavity preparation, shaping and cleaning of the root canal, and obturation. An ideal access cavity forms the foundation of root canal procedure and it allows a straight entry into the canal orifices. On the other hand, an improperly prepared access cavity can interfere with the instrumentation, disinfection and obturation, therefore affecting the prognosis of endodontic treatment. So in this video, we will be discussing the instruments and burrs used for access cavity preparation. At what step to use each of them, how to use them and their advantages in that particular step. First, we will divide access cavity preparation into a few categories according to the sequence followed in the root canal procedure. So first is access opening itself, where we gain entry into the pulp chamber. This is followed by pulp extirpation, which involves removing the pulp tissue and getting rid of any debris present. Then we move to orifice location, where we locate the canal orifices and determine the patency of the root canal. And the final step involves orifice enlargement. So starting with the instruments used for access opening. The first one we will discuss is the round burr, which is the most commonly used initial burr for access opening. It is used to penetrate into the pulp chamber. Once the drop into the pulp chamber is obtained, round burr is moved inside to outside in a brushing motion to remove the dentinal overhangs. The size of the round burr generally varies for both anterior as well as molars. A number 2 size round burr is used for anterior and premolars, whereas a number 4 size is used for molars. Now, if you want to create an axis through a crown, the type of round burr you use will differ. So, if it's a porcelain crown, you may select a diamond round burr. When preparing through modern crowns like zirconia, you can use a coarse diamond burr with a light touch and copious amount of water or you can use burrs that are specifically manufactured by many companies like Brassler, SS White, Coltine, etc. For gaining access through metal crowns, a tungsten carbide round burr will function better. Or you can use a transmetal burr which is specifically designed for cutting any type of metal. After gaining entry into the pulp chamber, you can then proceed with safe end diamond burr or an endo Z burr. Endo Z burr is a safe ended tapered carbide burr. As you can see in the image, these burrs do not have a cutting surface at the tip. Therefore, its non-cutting end can be safely placed directly on the pulpal floor without a risk of perforation. You can use these burrs to flare, flatten and refine the internal axial walls and to create a smooth transition between the axis cavity and the walls of the pulp chamber. In addition to the two types of burr we have discussed, there are burrs introduced with a combination of two shapes as well, such as the endo axis burr. The design of the burr is a combination of a round and a tapered coarse diamond which allows access into the pulp chamber and preparation of the chamber walls in one step. However, the most commonly used ones are the round burr for the initial access followed by the endo Z burr. After the access opening, the next step is pulp extirpation or debridement. It is necessary to remove all the pulp tissue present in the chamber to be able to locate the orifices clearly. So the first instrument that comes handy for this is the endodontic spoon excavator. The striking feature of this instrument is that it is larger than a conventional excavator. Its long shank allows us to curate the floor of the pulp chamber as opposed to the conventional ones as they are unable to reach the deeper part of the cavity. The next instrument we use for pulp extirpation is the barbed brooch. It is made from a round steel wire and the smooth surface of the wire is notched to form barbs bent at an angle from its long axis, as you can see in the image. These elevated barbs will engage the pulp tissue and remove it from the canal. A brooch is used only for extirpating the pulp, not for enlarging the canals. This is an instrument that you have to use very carefully and when using this, you have to select a size which loosely fits into the canal. Make sure that you do not force the brooch too far apically into the canal. If you do that, the barbs will get compressed by the canal wall and as you pull it out, there are chances that the barbs will get caught into the dentine wall. 
This will make it very difficult or almost impossible for you to remove the brooch. Or it could even break as it is an extremely fragile instrument. To minimize chances of breakage, one thing you can do is introduce a brooch after enlarging the canals with a K file. And again, make sure that it does not bind to the canal and it fits loosely. Avoid using this instrument in a narrow or a curved canal. And for the inexperienced dentists out there, in my opinion, you can refrain from using this instrument initially until you are confident with the basics of endodontic treatment. Moving on, we come to orifice location. Once the pulp tissue is completely removed and the chamber is clean, the pulpal floor is exposed. The next step involves locating the orifices, which is more challenging in case of multi-rooted teeth. So what instruments can we use to make it easier for us? One instrument that you all need to keep in your armamentarium is DG16. This was an instrument which was designed by David Green and has a 16 mm long tip and hence the name. It was designed to overcome difficulties that dentists encountered while exploring the root canal orifices with a regular straight probe or a cow horn explorer, especially in the posterior teeth. It has a long and thin shank which helps to easily identify canal orifices and to determine the canal angulation. Next, we have ultrasonic endo tips. They are available in various lengths, diameters, tapers and tip configurations. Ultrasonic tips with diamond coating can be used with or without water port delivery. They are attached to regular scalar units with specifications recommended by the manufacturers. In general, these are used to explore hidden orifices, remove pulp stones, negotiate calcified canals and refine the axis cavity. To uncover hidden canals, we also have tungsten carbide round burrs with long shafts. Example, Munn's Discovery Burrs or Drugs Burrs. The long narrow shafts of these burrs move the bulky head of the handpiece further away from the occlusal table and thus does not block our view. Therefore, it provides excellent visibility beyond the head of the handpiece, allowing a better view of the pulp chamber. These burrs are also used to remove restorative materials and dentine, including the overlying roof of the pulp chamber. And finally, we come to the last step of access cavity preparation, that is orifice enlargement or coronal flaring. Before we determine the working length of the tooth, we should first proceed with coronal flaring or orifice enlargement. This step is essential as it prevents any stress or friction that may be caused on the following shaping instruments, which in turn reduces the risk of instrument fracture. Also, the canal orifice is the gateway to the apical third. If the orifice in the coronal third is enlarged correctly, you can expect a better apical cleaning and shaping of the canal. It also reduces incidences of apical blockage, ledging, zipping, perforations and other endodontic mishaps. The advantages of coronal flaring are, it prevents premature binding of the shaping instruments to the canal walls, it creates a reservoir for irrigation solution and it allows a straight line access. Orifice enlargement or coronal flaring can be achieved with the help of gates split and drill or various rotary files called as orifice openers. Function of these instruments is to enlarge the orifice 3 to 4 mm into the canal. If you try to take the instruments to the working length, it can fracture or lead to over preparation. So, elaborating a little on gates glidden drills, these are small flame shaped cutting drills used with low speed handpiece. They come in different sizes. They are not very flexible, so there is a tendency to perforate the canal if placed too deep. The advantage of these instruments is that if it breaks, it will fracture at the shank instead of the tip. So you can easily retrieve it with the tweezer. It can be used at a speed of uh, 500 to 750 RPM in a brushing motion with a light touch. Start with a smaller size first depending on your canal diameter and you can sequentially increase the sizes to achieve the desired taper. Remember our aim is only coronal flaring. So don't go deeper than 3 to 4 mm. The only drawback of gates glid and drills is that there are chances of excessive preparation of the canal wall making it weaker, especially when preparing curved canals. Nowadays, various rotary orifice shaping files have replaced gates glid and drills and there are numerous files available in the market and you can work with any that you feel comfortable with. 
most of these orifice openers are 16 to 19 millimeter in length and have a 10 to 12 millimeter of cutting blade the taper generally ranges from 0.8 to 0.12 these are used only to prepare the coronal third of the root canal system when using these files some things to consider if the canal is wide open and easily negotiable it is acceptable to place a rotary orifice opener into the canal directly for example an upper anterior teeth lower molar distal roots and palatal roots of upper molars make sure that you flush the canal with irrigants to remove any debris that is being accumulated to prevent blockage as you use this file in other narrow canals it is preferred to establish patency with a small k file before using the orifice opener you can also instrument the canal and create a glide path up to 15 number file and then introduce the orifice openers this way you are safe and reduce any risk of instrument separation canal transportation and other endodontic accidents the preparatory work done by these files relieves the strain on the subsequently used files and creates ideal condition for preparation further apically and with this we come to an end i hope this video has helped you gain information on different instruments used for access cavity preparation i know that every clinician has a set of instrument that they are comfortable with in case you have any additions or inputs please share them in the comment section below it would be great to learn from you all and before you go please don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel also in the next video we will talk about the instruments used for the remaining steps of root